You remember when Trump said he put Hillary Clinton in prison? He also appointed a special prosecutor on her if he won. Well, now that he's won, he's had this to say when asked about the very question last night in 60 Minutes. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to think about it. I mean, she did I know, some but bad a thing. special prosecutor? You I think don't want to might... hurt them. I don't want to hurt them. They're, they're good people. Good people. Uh, now, all of a sudden, Bill and Hillary are those good people. Now, remember the wall. It was a centerpiece from right after he came down that golden escalator to all the way through the campaign. He'd build it, and you know who's going to pay for it. Say it, Dominic. Say Mexico, Dominic. Mexico. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, but uh, this is what he had to say on the same subject yesterday. Would you accept defense? Uh, for certain areas, I would, but certain areas, the wall is more appropriate. I'm very good at this. It's called construction. Now, those are just a couple of things. Either the position mitigated a little bit or altogether changed. Trust me, there was a bunch more. Obamacare, another one. We already told you about how we would keep parts of it. Uh, last night, Trump also said he likes the popular vote more than the Electoral College. I'm not sure he thought that one through. Pretty odd since he lost the popular vote. They said when all the votes are counted, probably it'll be about a million and a half that'll separate the two. And once... Um, you know, if you factor that position in, maybe we'd have a different one. This is the current count here. He's up, uh, or she's up about 600,000. Um, but there's more here, guys. Um, and Jerry, my question is, it's a difficult dance for anybody because, but usually this happens after the primary before the general. In this case, it's the general too, when he be, puts his hand on the Bible here and he takes an oath on January 20th. And I guess it comes back to the beginning of the program. We got Bannon in one ear. It's like the, the angel of Priebus on one and the devil with Bannon on the other shoulder whispering where he should go. How does he navigate people who voted for him because of all the red meat? And now he's got to realize that he's got to, uh, you know, you can campaign, what is it, uh, in something, but you got to, you know, legislate in pros. I mean, how does he do it? You, you eventually have to govern. I mean, this is to the point uh, of, of he's got to pick his priorities. And, and rather than building a wall, maybe you should build some roads and highways and, and bridges. I mean, that would be an effective way to go. I mean, he, if, if he gets things done, I, I think his support, his base, will forgive him for not putting Hillary in jail or prosecuting and going that. I think he clearly, um, that was campaign rhetoric, and now... He probably doesn't want to waste his time doing stuff like that. Um, he's got to pick. He's got to prioritize. And if he's smart, he'll pick effective things that people will say, wow, things are happening. People are getting to work. You know, he clearly uh, went to war with the press um, throughout the process. Even in the tweet that he sent out after the protest, Dominic was the press, was the boogeyman. Again, here was their fault. People were in a dozen cities as if the press can coordinate that. But anyway, um, he said last night again about, well, what about your tax returns? I mean, there's good reason more than just we want to know if he's a fraud or not. What does he owe money to the Russians? I'd like to know that, especially if he's now going to be crafting foreign policy. Um, what other financial is issues or interests are there, especially when we still don't know what's going to happen with the corporation and also the White House? And will the access between the two... He said he was going to show his returns once the audit's done. Do you think we will ever see those returns? And will he get pushed hard enough, or will that even get leaked? Oh, he'll, he'll be pushed, but I, certainly I don't think not in the first year of his administration. His way, we find Audits don't take that long. No, they <laughs> don't. His way, we all find despicable of how he acted during the campaign. But if it worked, why is he going to change? And so we're going to see more of the same. He's not, he can't, I, I, for lack of a better term, he's much too slick to have loan from X amount of Russians right there in his, in his tax returns. I'm sure you'll have to look through five uh, corporations Thank and so me. on. I touch too much credit with some of the subtlety of, of Mr. Trump, but maybe you're right. Um, I want to play a clip and get your reaction. This is what um, Donald Trump had to say specifically about NATO, which we've talked about quite a bit, Congressman. In my conversation with the president-elect, uh, he uh, expressed a, a great interest in uh, maintaining our core strategic relationships. Uh, and so one of the messages I will be able to deliver is his commitment to NATO and the transatlantic alliance. Uh, I think that's one of the most important functions I can serve at this stage during this trip uh, is to let them know that uh, there is no weakening of resolve when it comes to America's commitment to maintaining a strong and robust uh, NATO relationship. 
This obviously coming off the heels of uh, campaign Trump saying they don't pay protection money. In effect, uh, you know, a member of NATO uh, don't look to the U.S. Um, so do you buy that, that it was just rhetoric on the campaign trail? Or depending on who he makes his uh, national security advisor, or who he makes his defense uh, uh, secretary pick or the rest, what are you going to look for is obviously somebody who sat on the appropriate committees to have this conversation from candidate Trump versus President Trump. Well, your first question, was he just saying these things and not really knowing their impact or their import, importance? Uh, maybe. He's just saying things that were th to throw red meat to his crowd who don't like foreigners and uh, think we should turn inward as a nation. But uh, on the merits, NATO's really good for the United States. Uh, it's a bulwark against Russia's aggression. It's a bulwark against uh, terrorism. Again, Their I just team for time want to ask you this, though. Yeah. The president goes around, does a world tour, and says to all our allies, trust me, it'll be okay. If you'll say that, do they say, yeah, right? <laughs> okay, here's the thing I wrote down, egg on his face. I'm sure that Donald Trump, after he heard President Obama's explanation about the necessity of our NATO alliance, said, yeah, that's probably a good idea. I'm going to back off that NATO thing. And you can tell everybody. And Obama's now telling everybody, well, Trump said, President-elect Trump says, we're going to be with NATO. I just hope, and the President Obama's going to go around and say that, I hope the President Obama doesn't get egg on his face if Trump were to, God forbid, you realize, when he gets, basically when he like has my his, kid's fifth grade he teacher has saying, his own presidency, this is what the United States goes is, this against is the world. NATO. Yeah. Oy vey. Okay, um, guys, thank you all very much. I want you to stay with me, because on the other side of the break, uh, a fascinating story, and one that you've heard the name of, Kitty Genevieve. She was, of course, that woman tragically murdered in cold blood in Kew Gardens in Queens, while dozens of her neighbors watched and didn't help. What if I told you it never happened that way? Well. We visited the scene of the crime to look into it. We spoke to the neighbors and also talked to a filmmaker who helps find out what really happened more than 50 years ago.